My name is Kenny Solway, and I'm known as the last river rat. Folks say I'm a dying breed. My home has always been the Mississippi River, and here I've survived all my life as a hunter, trapper, fisherman, and writer. The river is my lifeblood, and indeed it is the lifeblood of our nation. It splits America in half, so to speak, and yet it joins it together. Uh, I'd like for you to, to kick back, relax. Pretend you're along the banks of the great river. You know, life is too short to hurry through. And it seems as though we kind of hurry a little more every day. We don't necessarily have to. We can sit back. Take a little time for yourself. Be selfish. You can do that in your backyard. You can do it in a, in a park. You can go out on the river. You can climb a bluff. You can do it anywhere you feel like. Now that, that's number one. Number two is <clears throat> that right off the bat, I would like to tell you folks what I think of they say there are no more true American heroes being made. That all the, all the frontiers in the world have been conquered. Even space, even the moon, the people on the moon. I'm here to tell you that that is the biggest bunch of bunk I've ever heard. I want you folks to go right this very evening and find yourself a full-length mirror. And you take a good long look in that mirror. And you will see a true American hero, each and every one of you. Why do I say that? <clears throat> well, it is because you care. Caring is what really matters. You care about two most important resources in the world, our natural resources and our human resources, those who will follow us. And that is uh, not only commendable, that, that puts you right up there in that hero bracket. We also are here tonight to speak for those, of course, who cannot speak for themselves. And that is not only our children, but also the critters, the birds, the fish, all the living things in that great circle of life. They can't speak for themselves. They have to take what we dish out to them. And in some cases, it's not been pretty. The circle of life, of course, is something that we all walk hand in hand, eye to eye, heart to heart. And not just the beautiful things in that great circle, like white-tailed deer, bald eagles, butterflies, wildflowers, but also unhuggable things like bats and snakes, deer flies, mosquitoes, black boots up in Mississippi mud that I fall face first into once in a while, poison ivy, all those unhuggable things in the circle. We, yet we must learn to love and respect all our fellow travelers. But that's not to say that you see a water snake sleeping on a log and you say, well, you're one of my fellow travelers. I just love all you folks. I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> and you're going to get you a bite in return, a guarantee. 
But what you can do is you can allow that water snake to sleep on the wall and catch a frog or a mouse for supper. And that's called tolerance. And if we can learn to tolerate the unhuggable things in the great circle of life, maybe, just maybe, we'll learn to tolerate each other a little bit better as well, don't you think? I firmly, totally believe in the Mississippi Valley Conservancy. I'll tell you how much I believe in it. My wife, Mary Kay, now I must go, go back a little bit here and give you a little background. I was uh, born in Buffalo County, Buffalo County, Wisconsin. Uh, Buffalo County, Wisconsin is a mini Appalachia. Steep, hill, wooded. You go up one side and then you go across a narrow ridge and you go down another hill and you're in a valley. And in that valley, it usually runs beautiful, sparkling, clear, youthful, exuberant waters. And those waters dance their way down the valley floor. And then they join onto a little bigger river or creek. Now, Buffalo County, back in 1965, had 14,000 residents, approximately. The last census, there were 13,800 in the entire county. We had one stoplight in Buffalo County, we blame that on Winona, Minnesota. <laughs> we feel one stoplight is on too many. A lot of us in Buffalo County are related. Some of us perhaps a little too close. <laughs> you just might be looking at one of them. And so Buffalo County is still my home. I was born July 12, 1943, in my mother's own bed. French Canadian, Woodland Cree folks. And uh, they had no real use for something called education. They figured the old ways were good enough for them to be good enough for me. <laughs> and so I went to a little one room country school. I guess you could say when I found the time. Uh, I would walk along the creek, Wamadi Creek in the spring of the year, the blackbirds would be singing their springtime song from the top of the cattails and the wild geese would be flying north to nest. And I'd crawl out on the log and I'd look down the water and I wondered where that water going to? What's it going to see? Will it ever come back here again? That's before I ever read a book called Round the River by Aldo Leopold. Indeed, the water will come back again. Somehow, some way, it will. And I might see a fish or a frog or a turtle or a snake. And I look up, I see that little schoolhouse. And I'd say, I don't think so. It's too nice a spring day today. Uh, I mean, I, I always knew that the schoolhouse was there. I'd like to say it was seven miles away from my house, and I had a walk there, and the walking was uphill both ways. <laughs> but in reality, it was a mile or so. I always uh, took my time going to school. I'd walk through the hills in the fall, sit up against a red oak tree. I watched my little fellow travelers, the, the uh, chipmunks and squirrels, practicing their layaway plan for winter. <laughs> Nobody had to tell those little folks, you better be getting ready now, winter's coming. They didn't need no schoolhouse. Couldn't figure out why I would. The wild geese would be flying south. And I'd look up at them, wonder where you're going to, what you're going to see, how many you'll come back again. 
And then I looked down and see the roof of that schoolhouse and might not get there. Then when I did, I was looking out the windows, wishing I was outside, chewing the covers off the books, making paper airplanes. Those were the days before detention. <laughs> we had one school teacher for eight grades probably 30 kids in the whole school. Her name was Mrs. Wendland. She had the hearing capability of a red fox standing in a hayfield in a 40 mile an hour wind, <laughs> listening for mice. And she could have heard me. At my desk way in the back of the room. She knew I'd be coming in late a lot of days. Well, I'd come a sneaking in and my little bib overall butt would barely touch that seat. Her head would snap up. She'd say, Kenneth, you're late again. Are you not? I didn't like how she used the word again, but I reckon it was true. And I never knew how to answer when she'd say, are you not? <laughs> so I'd say, yes, Mrs. Lundell. And she'd say, well, then I have some jobs for you tonight after school. You can dust the erasers, wash the blackboards. You can go out and pump a pail of water, bring it in, bring some firewood in. And I was late coming home on her every night. And my poor old ma thought I just loved school. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I tell you that story because I'm strange, worthy, worthy, trail of light leads one. Because I got married, remarried, uh, 15 years ago to a, a lady that uh, holds a doctorate. And you're looking at more or less a dropout. Uh, she has a, a job called the Wildlife Education Specialist for the entire state of Wisconsin for the DNR. And uh, so, we make a strange pair. <laughs> but she has the, uh, the best of academic world, and I have a doctorate in the School of Hard Knocks. And we try to combine those two things to make a better world. And the better world now that we have come to, to see and to understand is to donate are 80, about 80 acres of land and a house that we've been building on for 10 years. It's a new old house made out of two barns, a granary and a house. And all of our assets, uh, Mary Kay, well, I'm a river rat, Mary Kay is a pack rat. <laughs> <laughs> I, think she's out, I think she's out in the car. <laughs> Her and Mango, our dog, the Black Lab uh, rescue dog that we got a year ago, are out shopping tonight. Um, and so we have a house full of uh, antiques and you name it. Mary Kay likes to collect those things. And all those, well, everything we have will go to the Mississippi Valley Cons Conservancy. We have no children. And we believe in the conservancy. You sit down with those folks and, and you can talk as though you're just at the kitchen table with a friend or a neighbor. And they have an understanding of the, the, the legal things and, the, and they, they understand also and love and respect the land. It's not some kind of a business venture. It's a, it is a work of love. Mm -hmm. And that's what the, we have the Nature Conservancy come to our place. And, and uh, we were first going to go with them. Uh, we decided against it. We loved the idea of a local, a local people that, that really loved this driftless area. And, uh, so that's why uh, tomorrow at 10.30 we will pick up the papers, the will, so forth, from our lawyer. And uh, so then that will be 
that will be settled in our minds and our hearts. Now, how much time do I have left here? You're doing okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Tim called me and was wanting to know whether I could do a, a short talk at, the, at this gathering tonight. And I said, well, how short are you talking? He said, 15 minutes or so. I said, I'm a slow talker. <laughs> I don't know what I'll get said in 15 minutes. Maybe just, hello folks, uh, nice day today, wasn't it? So anyhow, we have to, I have to keep uh, my eye, or Tim can keep his eye on the, on the clock. Uh, clocks are strange things. They're, they're made in circles, just like the circle of life. The circle of life is round, the earth is round, the moon, the, the, uh, you build a campfire, you build it in a circle, not a square. And circles are very important because if you draw a perfect circle, you cannot find the beginning and you cannot find the end. And that's what the circle of life is. There is no beginning and there is no end, really. So, I uh, believe in each and every one of you folks. I certainly believe that our young folks are better than ever. You know, every generation has had to listen to, to some folks say, uh, you know, that, oh, those young people, they're, they're going to the perver proverbial hot spot in a handcart. No. Uh -uh. You think about it. Think of, think of it. We, every school now has environmental days. They have Earth Day, thanks to Gaylord Nelson. They have uh, in, environmental studies have to be integrated into the curriculum of schools. They have school forests. They, there's Adopt the Highway. Adopt the Islands is, is coming now on the river. Um, there's very little littering compared to what there used to be. Uh, when I was a kid in the hills, uh, our idea of getting rid of junk was to hitch a team of horses to an old hay wagon and, and throw all the junk on there and go up in the hills and find a ditch. And the ditch, preferably, was downhill, so you didn't have to throw it uphill. <laughs> you just roll it off that wagon and click it and clank, bang, bang, and <clears throat> a lot of those ditches are still filled with junk. So, you, now we have recycling. Every child knows about recycling. It took us forever to figure out we can use something more than once. Unbelievable, it took us this long. But now, if you're driving down the highway and you've got a candy bar and you take it out and you unwrap it, you crush it up, you roll the window down, a little voice in the back seat and say, don't do that. It's littering, that's no good. <laughs> so we are learning. And once again, folks, can I wrap this up now, Jim? Thank you. <clears throat> well, another thing before I do. Uh, you know, this was one darn good meal. <laughs> and uh, we all part first maybe had a drink or something, and then a beautiful big meal. And any critter in their right mind now would want to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> so, see, as far as I'm concerned, you know, that's good. That's good. Because it, it would mean that, that we are at ease with each other and our surroundings fellow travelers. Uh, we do not own our bank accounts. 
We do not own our houses. We do not own the metal cocoons we run up and down the highway in. We certainly cannot own the land when we, you know, the, the snowflakes, the raindrops, the, the rays of sun, the moonbeams that fall upon it, or the wind that blows across it. When we purchase land, we are purchasing a privilege, the privilege of being a good steward of that land. Then we turn it over to somebody else, along with everything I just mentioned. But one thing we do own is our time. And none of us knows how much of it we have. And for you folks to see fit to spend an hour or two of your precious time to take care <coughs> of the natural world and to see that the, that world is protected does my old river rat heart good. For as long as the robin sings and the green grass grows in the spring, and the, the wildflowers send their fragrance to waft upon the summer's breeze, when the white-tailed deer drifts through the forest like a dark shadow in the autumn, and the turtle sleeps away the winter in that black boot sucking Mississippi mud. For that long, I shall remember each and every one of you. For you are all true American heroes. You go find that mirror. There's one right back there for that matter. And you look at a hero. Thank you very much.